when we start to work with people from other cultures, one of the easiest ways is to figure out what we share in common. And so we're going to be looking at something called the global goals, and I'll get more into that in a little bit. But I want you to first go back to this slide and think about ways that young people can help solve shared problems in your communities. And there's some white space here, so you and your teacher can write some notes on the board. And I will wait. You can pause me now. So hopefully you came up with some ideas on how you guys can help solve problems that are in your communities and what those problems might even be. So we're going to think about these 17 global goals. The United Nations is a group of world leaders and they come together every once in a while to work on problems that the world shares in communities that are just bigger than their school or their town, but in entire countries. So there are 17 goals that these leaders decided, you know what, we can actually make the world a better place by the year 2030 if we work on these together. So I'm going to briefly introduce you to these 17 goals, and then you're going to play a game and learn more about them and decide which one matters to you. So the first global goal is no poverty. What is poverty? Well, it's really people who live in such conditions that where they're so poor, they can't afford to have their food. Sometimes, as you heard in William's story, they have to scrape by and only have one meal a day. So poverty is a real problem around the world. And the first goal that everybody's trying to work on together is to end that way of life where people don't have enough resources for their, their goods and services, not just for what they want, but also just for their basic needs. So if that matters to you, keep that in your mind. The second goal, no hunger. So obviously, you know, we sometimes go home a little bit hungry because we didn't like what was for lunch that day, but there are always people who have it worse than we do. So the second global goal is to end hunger and make sure everyone has not, a, not just enough food to eat, but food that's healthy. And to make that a priority or something that's really important and at the top of the list, to make that sustainable. So the word sustainable just means like you can do it over and over again and for more than one purpose or one person. So if we were going to grow our own garden, we would want to make sure it was sustainable and that we could keep that garden growing year after year, not just use it one time and be done. Goal number three is good health and well-being. And we just want everybody to have an opportunity to have a healthy life. And it doesn't, de doesn't matter what age they are. So if my mom's 69 and she had some heart disease, she can make changes to make her health better. It's never too late. So if that matters to you, keep that in your mind. Goal number four, quality education. The goal here is to make sure everyone can be included in getting a good quality education. In some parts of the world, girls are not allowed to go to school. In some parts of the world, school is not free. So one of these goals is to make sure that everybody can get a good education no matter where they live and to keep learning for as long as they want to. Goal number five, gender equality. So in some places, girls and boys are treated differently and one of these goals is just, just make sure that everybody has opportunities to do what they want in life and for their families and communities, no matter if they're boys or girls. Goal number six is about clean water and sanitation. So a lot of times, you know, you go into the bathroom and you wash your hands and you don't really think about that water being clean, but it actually is. In some places it's not. And they have to really worry about the diseases that could be in the water, even if it's just for sanitation, like cleaning their hands or washing their toilets. So we want everybody in the world to have clean water and to have healthy systems. This next goal is about energy and just having modern energy that, again, is sustainable, that we can use it over and over again, not just use it up. So this is an important goal when you think about all the things that we do with technology. What if we didn't have electricity? What if we ran out of electricity? Then all of these things like texting and Facebook and YouTube and emojis would all go away. So w the goal here is just to make sure that everyone has energy that's modern and it can be used over and over again and that it's reliable, that you can count on that you switch the light on and it's going to come on. Goal number eight is about good jobs and making the economy grow. So when you studied producers and consumers in second grade, you learned all about the ways that people produce things for other people to use. And we want to make sure that everyone has that opportunity for a good paying job and to keep their community growing with their goods and services. Goal number nine is about industry, innovation, and infrastructure. And those are just fancy vocabulary words for businesses and companies 
and systems that we use every day, like roads and transportation, cars, airplanes, trains, buses, everybody should have access to those things. And to make sure that we have the conditions where we can just keep innovating and creating new ideas and building on what has come before. Goal number 10, this is just about reducing inequality. So inequality means there's not equality and that people are not treated the same or fairly. And so this goal is just making sure that everyone around the world has an equal chance at life that they want. And some countries are poorer, more poor than others. We talked about poverty with goal number one. So if your country doesn't have as many resources as a country like the United States, it really shouldn't matter. You should still have an equal opportunity to have a good life. So that's this goal. Goal number 11, sustainable cities. So as the world gets more and more people in it, we have to make sure that our cities are still safe, that they welcome everyone no matter where they come from, and that, again, nobody runs out of the needs that they have. Goal number 12 is about consuming and producing in a way that doesn't waste things. So if you think about all the food that's wasted when we compost our lunches, Maybe we shouldn't be producing so much food, or maybe we should be consuming more food. It, it really is about making sure that we have enough, but not too much. Goal number 13, a lot of people talk about um, their concerns and their worries about um, glaciers melting and where a polar bear is going to live. So one of the goals here is to take urgent action, not just think about it, but actually do something about it to fix the climate change and the way it's affecting life on the planet Earth. Goal number 14 is about life below water and making sure that we are using our resources involving the oceans and the seas and our lakes and doing it in a way that we can keep having those things for everybody. And then goal number 15 is about life on land and managing our forests and protecting all of the life that lives in rainforests and other different types of species that could be in danger if we start cutting down all the trees. So again, if any of these goals matter to you, be thinking about what you would like to invent or create or what kind of solution you could come up with and work with other people on as we get closer to the end here. So number 16 is about peace and justice. And the goal is really just about working together to have communities that treat people fairly and that nobody's afraid of living in those communities. And the last goal is just partnerships. Partnerships are, are ways that people work together. So governments need to come together and citizens need to come together with them if we're going to work on these goals by 2030.